Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and I have been waiting for this for such a long time. A good 42 inch OLED TV. We were teased about it last year by LG Display, but it never actually arrived. And so the smallest C1 series was 48 inches, which you may recall I attempted to use as a desk monitor, but then fairly quickly switched back as I got eye strain and headaches. It was just too big and my desk was, well, too small. So here we are again, but this time I actually have a bigger desk, but more importantly, this guy, the smaller 42 inch C2, which I'm hoping might actually be good enough to replace my 38 inch ultra wide monitor, which I've been using for well over a year now. So this is the new setup with the 42 inch C2 nestled neatly between my Mac studio and my desktop PC, which I use a combination of. I go back and forth between them for my video editing and work and also gaming. Now, first things first, this video is not sponsored by LG. I actually bought this TV myself for the fairly hefty price of 1400 pounds. That's the same in dollars, which is a lot of money. And the reason I think this could be a good work and gaming monitor replacement is the fact that it's slightly less ridiculously big than most other high-end TVs at 42 inches, but we're still getting that gorgeous 4K OLED HDR 10-bit 120Hz screen with HDMI 2.1, sub 1 millisecond response times, G-Sync and FreeSync, pretty good built-in speakers, and almost as a bonus, it's a TV and media hub. There are other options, like Samsung's new 43-inch Q90B QLED, which is probably its closest rival in terms of TVs, and actually does cost the same at 1400 And then there's a range of big gaming-focused monitors now, and I'm particularly excited to test the upcoming ASUS ROG PG42UQ, although I dread to think how expensive that thing's going to be. So certainly this is not the best solution for everyone, and there are a couple of problems which I'll come back to in a second, but you have to admit it does look quite good. Now, compared to last year's C1 TVs, there isn't a whole lot new here. Well, except for the fact that we have this new 42 inch size, most of the fancy OLED Evo tech and brighter screens are reserved for the 55 inch and bigger models. But we do still get some nice upgrades. And I think the first thing you'll notice with this is the new dual foot stand. Now, I don't think it's the best looking thing ever, but it is stable. And most importantly, look at this. Compared to the C1 stand, which is shared by the 48 inch C2 as well, it only sticks out about half as much out the back, which means if you are using this in a tight space, like on your desk in your office or bedroom, you can push it much further back. And of course you can also wall mount it if you prefer. Also consider that while the peripherals, the keyboard and mice that I'm using here for both the PC and the Mac are all Bluetooth, because I like to have a slightly cleaner cable-less setup, if you do have a wide keyboard, which you may do, especially if you are gaming and you want that mechanical instant response with zero latency, then because you haven't got the central stand like you do on all the other TVs, your cable can go straight underneath down the middle, which is quite nice. The screen itself is almost identical to last year, albeit now in a small size, although I did notice it is a little bit more color accurate out of the box, and also there are some slight improvements to upscaling and brightness, but what is more obvious is the fact that menus, the UI, changing inputs, all felt a lot snappier thanks to the new Alpha Gen 5 processor, even compared to last year's Gen 4 chip, which powers the LG G1 that I still use in my lounge. That is a real improvement, although perhaps not exactly an essential upgrade. And to be honest with you, I think if it wasn't for this 42 inch size, which is exclusive to the new C2 series, I would probably suggest going with last year's C1, whether it's the 48 or 55 inch. Not only because it's a good third cheaper, you can get the 48 inch for under a grand now, but also the fact that there isn't that much difference between the generations and this is quite a lot of money. However, what you can do is wait six months because later in the year, often around Black Friday in November, you'll see big discounts on these TVs, which is actually something you don't really see with monitors. In fact, the LG Ultrawide, the 38WN95C, which I have been using, still costs like 1400 or 1500 pounds on Amazon. It's barely in stock and it's barely gone down in price, whereas TVs go down in price a lot quicker. So if you can wait a few months, then this is probably going to be a much better value proposition. Now, a big thank you to Incogni for sponsoring this video. It's an all-new product from the lovely guys over at Surfshark, who are, of course, famous for their VPN. But Incogni solves one of the biggest problems that we all face today. Our personal data being shared, being used, and even sold without us knowing about it. 
But the thing is, you have the right to request data brokers to delete the information they have on you, but that can be tricky and time consuming. So Incogni does all that messy work for you automatically. So you can protect your privacy by taking your personal data off the market. Simply create an account, tell them whose personal data you'd like to be removed, and Incogni will reach out to the data brokers on your behalf, requesting your personal data be removed and also dealing with any objections. And so everything from your address and contact details to your shopping habits, your email, your background, you name it, they probably have it. So why not give Incogni a try? And actually for the first 100 people to use the code TECHCHAP with the link below, we'll get 20% off Incogni. I've used it and I recommend you do too. Let's talk about gaming because this is where the TV really shines. With four full fat HDMI 2.1 ports on the back, you can hook up your PS5, your Series X, or your desktop PC, and it'll then automatically switch to the low latency game optimizer mode, which turns off all the background processing stuff to give you the fastest response time possible, which LG says can be under one millisecond, which is pretty incredible and better than most monitors. Also, unlike most monitors, we get much better HDR support with TVs like this, not just the formats with Dolby Vision, HDR10, and HLG, but also the brightness. I've recorded a peak of over a thousand nits on a 25% window size on this TV. Eventually, HDR content settles around 800 nits or so, with SDR topping out just over 500 nits, which for an OLED is actually very impressive. Now these figures are with the OLED pixel brightness maxed out to 100, up from the default 80, but mostly I keep this at about 85 or 90 so it doesn't strain my eyes or the OLED panel. And just like any good gaming monitor, we also get VRR in the forms of FreeSync Premium and G-Sync compatibility. Now this new multi-view option in the quick menu was a bit of a tease because I had thought that maybe I could have two HDMI inputs side by side in picture by picture mode, but sadly it seems it is only for one input plus a screen share or webcam, which is not as much fun. A proper KVM switch would have been good to see. This game optimizer menu does come in handy though. It tells you what FPS you're getting and will dynamically adjust in game. And it's also where you can check on all the gaming features and different gaming picture modes. It's a useful little tool. So the best experience with this is either with a console or a desktop PC via HDMI 2, well 2.1 specifically, because that way if it supports it, you can get full 4K 120 with all 10 bit and all HDR and all that good stuff as well. It is a bit of a different story when it comes to using a Mac. Because Apple's HDMI ports are 2.0, and also we don't have a USB-C Thunderbolt port on the TV, sadly we are limited to 4K 60. I must admit, I've spent hours trawling through forums, trying to figure out if there's any way of getting 4K120 out of my Mac, but right now it just doesn't seem possible, which is a bit disappointing as someone who regularly uses a MacBook Pro 16 and is used to that 120 hertz ProMotion and also on my desktop where I can get that full fat 4K120. However, one thing that is a bit more of a problem is this auto dimming. It seems to be a fairly common feature slash issue for OLEDs, particularly when you have a white or bright image on the screen for more than a few minutes. And actually even turning off all the OLED care safety features, it still happens. You can see the screen just starts to slowly dim down. But then once I switch tabs or use the remote, essentially wake it back up, it goes back to full brightness. Now my understanding is that this is to prevent overheating. OLEDs aren't really designed for long periods of displaying bright white images. And it can be fixed, sort of. There is a workaround, well, simply by lowering the OLED pixel brightness to under 50, then I didn't really notice it as much, or indeed just use more dark backgrounds and night modes where possible. But I did also notice switching between apps or tabs, say within Chrome, can also shift the brightness by around 20, 25 nits. And so sometimes you just get these little noticeable changes in brightness. The good news though is that it's not an issue for gaming, for watching movies, or general TV use, and I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker as a monitor, but it is a downside worth bearing in mind of using an OLED for office work. Now going back to burn-in for a moment, because this may be a concern for you if you're going to use this as a desktop. To be honest, I don't think you have anything really to worry about as long as you're sensible and you do use some of these OLED care settings, which are on by default. Although I would recommend keeping logo brightness adjust on low, also auto power off set to two hours, keep the screen move option on as well, as this just shifts the pixels a tiny bit every 10 minutes or so, and maybe keep the pixel brightness to 80 or 90 rather than 100.
Speaking of settings though, you have a whole range of different picture modes to choose from with even more HDR specific modes as well, but I mostly use ISF Bright when I'm working on just the desktop, although I did drop the color temperature from warm 50 down to warm 5, and then also I use Game Optimizer when I'm gaming or have a console hooked up. But for desktop use, you are going to want to make sure that most settings and processing options are all turned off, like True Motion. It's worth having a fiddle with the picture settings, but generally you're going to want everything off. So far, this seems to be a much better experience than last year when I tried this with the big 48 inch screen. The reason, as I say, I didn't want to stick with that is because I genuinely did get headaches. Obviously pushing it further back, wall mounting would have helped, but I do think this smaller 42 inch size will make all the difference. And on the whole, I am really impressed with this setup. Although the auto dimming, that 4K 60 limit on Mac, and also quite high price are definitely drawbacks. And also unlike a lot of monitors with matte screens, this is glossy, so be aware of any bright light sources behind you. But the size, the quality of this OLED screen, all the gaming features, together with impressive brightness and color accuracy for my video and photo editing, it really is stunning. And I think more than ever, a genuine alternative to a regular big monitor. And I've barely even mentioned the fact that this is a TV and media hub as well. I mean, I recently reviewed Samsung's M8 Smart Monitor, and the whole idea with that is that you had some TV media hub features built into the monitor. Whereas this is coming from the other direction. But what do you reckon? Could you see this on your desk at home? Or is it still just too big? Let me know what you make of it in the comments below. And also, would you go for an OLED or a QLED desktop replacement monitor? Also, if you have any questions or things you'd like me to test in the sort of longer term, let me know and I will come back in a couple of months, revisit this and tell you what I think. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and I will catch you next time right here on the tech chat. Oh, and last thing, don't forget to try out Incogni. Use the code TECHCHAP and the first 100 people can get 20% off and take back your privacy online.